we're going to work on the materials budget. You should have already reviewed the production budget video before you do this one. Alright, here we go. What do you start with? You start with the production budget, which is why I wanted you to first study that before you came here. You don't decide what you're going to buy until you first decide what you're going to produce because you have to have enough to produce what you expect. Uh, so that's that's your starting point is the production budget. If you don't have the production budget, then you have to go solve for the production budget first before you can do the materials budget. All right, so let's say you've got the production budget. Here's the good news. There probably is a production budget. Here's the bad news. It's wrong. Why? Because it's based on the sales forecast and the sales forecast is an estimate. So if the production budget is wrong, if you have produced too much or too little as sales start rolling out and you realize in what direction the error is, production will adjust. So either they'll slow down or they'll speed up production. So in order to be sure you have the materials you need, you need a little cushion in case production speeds up. So how much they need on hand depends on how easy it is to get more and how risk adverse management is. So the policy about how much to have depends on how easy it is to get. Now what's important to remember is that the cushion that they need for materials, raw materials, will not be the same as the cushion that they desire for finished goods. Why? Because it might be very easy to make another finished good might take an hour to make another one. So you don't need very many extra on hand because in an hour you can make more. But it might take weeks to get more raw material shipped in from Australia. Or it could be the reverse. It could take weeks to cure the paint on a new car, but it might only take four hours to get a new part because the suppliers across the street or across town. So let's do the computation. Here's an example of a purchase budget for January. So we need 70,000 raw material, whatever, pounds, feet, whatever it is, wheels, circuit boards. Here's the cushion that management wants. They want 8,000. So they need 78,000 to cover what they're going to need for production plus a little extra because production's a guess and it could change. And then they're not going to go buy the whole 78 because they already have 7,500. Okay, so they need to purchase 70,500 units of whatever the materials are. So do February then. So we're going to need 89,000, adding the 80 and the 90 up. We don't need to purchase all 89,000 in February because at the end of January we had 8,000 left over meaning that we are ha we start February with 8,000 so we only need to buy 81,000. Now this rhythm of beginning plus a target less what's on hand is the same rhythm as the production budget. The same logic and the same rhythm occur. What's important though is to s distinguish is that production budget is finished good units and materials budget or purchases budget is raw material units and they are not the same. One's a TV and one's a screen. One's a roller skate and one's shoelaces, right? They're, they're not the same. So let's contrast the production and the material purchases budget. The production budget on the top is in finished good units. So January we're going to sell 10,000 units. We need a thousand extra. We already have some on hand, so we need to produce 9,500 finished good units. Now, how many raw materials will you need to produce 9,500 finished good units? And that will be a multiple. I'll need four wheels for each roller skate. I will need three circuit boards for each cell phone. I'll need whatever four feet of wire for each radio. And then how much of a cushion do I need? Less what I already have. This is how many raw material units I need to purchase.